group wants you to have a look in here first of all. This is where the convoy is supposed to be. If you see nothing, go on down the leads as far as Sonia Fjord and then come home. Okay? Yes, sir. You shouldn't have any trouble getting in or out. You've been to all these places before and know them pretty well. My home is here in Nascol, sir. Good. Well, all the squadrons will be standing by here and you're to send a signal the moment you find the convoy. Okay, sir. It was winter, the last winter of the European War. Every day at dawn, a mosquito took off from Scotland to fly to Norway. The men in the mosquito belonged to a Norwegian squadron. They were scouts, and their job was to fly up and down the coast of their homeland in search of Hitler's ships. From the Arctic Ocean to the Skagerrak, Along the hundreds of miles of Norway's mountainous and heavily indented coastline, shipping routes take the place of roads and railways. These were Hitler's convoys. Every ship heavily armed with anti-aircraft guns, every convoy accompanied by a large escort of special flagships. Since 1940, when Hitler occupied Norway, they'd been making their way to Germany, carrying thousands of tons of pyrites, fish oil, timber, and iron ore. Iron ore for tanks, guns, aircraft, U-boats, and for more merchant ships to carry more iron ore. In 1944, they were also carrying tens of thousands of troops withdrawn from Finland, troops that Hitler needed badly on the Western Front. And on their return, they brought coal, oil, food, ammunition, and stores to the German garrison in Norway itself. This traffic had been going on for four years, ever since the Blitzkrieg invasion of Norway in the spring of 1940. And for four years, the strike squadrons of Coastal Command had been battling to stop it. They'd robbed Hitler of thousands of men, thousands of guns, tanks, and aircraft. They'd sunk over a hundred of his merchant ships outright and damaged hundreds of others beyond repair. In the last winter of the war, as the Allies were closing in on Germany from all sides, the Norwegian battle rose to a climax. The total cargo carried on this route had shrunk by more than two-thirds in a single year. Hitler was finding it harder and harder to supply his Norwegian garrisons at one end of the line and his flagging industry at the other. This is the actual sailing route the convoys followed. Inside the islands, hugging the coast. But still they were not safe. From Arlesund to Bergen, the shipping lanes were strewn with the wrecks of iron ore ships, colas, tankers, and cargo boats of all sizes. There came a time when the convoys no longer dared to sail at all by daylight, and so it looked like this. Day. And night. Deep in the fjords, the ships lay up all day in the shelter of the flak guns hidden in the mountainsides. They lay up and waited. Waited for the coming of darkness when they could up anchor and make a quick dash along the coast to the next fjord before dawn. And so the aircraft had a new task to follow them up the tortuous waterways and sink them where they lay hidden. This, then, was the battlefield. 300 miles away, in Scotland, the squadrons of mosquitoes and bow fighters stood by each day in readiness, waiting only for the signal that a convoy had been sighted. Over the fjords were the Norwegian scouts.
According to the recce aircraft, the convoy is here in Nord Gulland Field. Five merchant vessels, a tanker and four escorts. The bigger ships are known to be carrying guns and heavy equipment withdrawn from Finland on their way back to Germany. So it's an important convoy as well as a large one. Now we make landfall Yetron Light, then go inland for 20 miles as far as the end of Eki Field and turn north. The highest point here is 4,000 feet. When we get to Olfoot Glacier, turn left again so as to come down Nord Gulland Field from the east. They know they've been spotted, so they'll be expecting us, and there'll be no surprise about the attack. This convoy will be as heavily defended as anything we've seen up here. They'll put up bags of flak from the hillsides, as well as the ships. So watch out and keep well in together. Anyone straggling behind will be asking for trouble. Any questions? Okay, let's go. Controller? Yes, sir. Take off 10.30. They're leaving the ops room now. Leader 
into formation, target straight ahead, deploy for attack. Attack, attack, attack. This is how they left the ships. In the end, the Germans gave up trying to salvage them. They couldn't keep pace with the rate of destruction. Day after day, month after month, the attacks went on, until May 1945, when, without a blow, the German garrison in Norway surrendered to the Allies.